Well, first of all, I am skeptical of the estimates about the size of this mobilization, the size of any uh, coming offensive. I don't believe any numbers that come out of out of Moscow to begin with. I doubt that they have fixed all the problems that we saw with the last mobilization back in September, that the logistics system is not prepared. Even if they could find two or 300,000 new people, I don't know that their logistics are in place. Of course, they're not interested in creating a modern lethal force, only mass, but still uh, to have effect from their for any sort of invasion with mass, you still need transportation, you still need ammunition, you still need the capability to support even untrained mass infantry. So I am a little bit skeptical that there is going to be some significant new sort of thing. For sure, they want Ukraine, they want all of us worrying about a new offensive, looking to the northern border, worrying about um, a new threat so that Ukraine is not able to focus its efforts where it wants to. But I think that the combined intelligence capabilities of Ukraine, the U.S. and the U.K. will have a good feel for what really is out there. No doubt they will push lots of untrained infantry into the meat grinder as they have been doing in hopes of overwhelming Ukraine's defenses. Well, of course, uh, Paris, I would I would defer to your expertise because you've been there. You you know what you have seen. But in my professional assessment, I don't see how they will have repaired the institutional problems they have logistically. They don't have, as far as I can tell, even the cadre of experienced sergeants and officers to train new soldiers. Uh, basic things. And of course, as you know, having a lot of soldiers does not equal having a good unit or a good capability. So I would anticipate in whatever happens over the next two or three months that they will continue to uh, use, rely on untrained uh, mass numbers and uh, to try to overwhelm Ukrainian defenders. I think that the Wagner Group today is nothing like what it was a year ago. That They, too, have suffered lots of casualties to include amongst their more experienced, better fighters. So the, uh, even the, uh, the airborne units um, have lost so many of their experienced soldiers, and so they've had to fill up with replacements from recently mobilized soldiers, is what I believe. You, you may have a better view of this. So I, I think that... Uh, They've got all of us talking about, you know, huge mobilization, huge offensive to cause us to worry, to be distracted about something that I don't believe they can do, at least not to the level that is being discussed. So I personally um, prefer to avoid talking about specific weapons or specific platforms, but instead focus on what is the, uh, the capability that is required for Ukraine. And it seems to me that the capability that is required for Ukraine is the ability to strike long range with precision, whether that comes from an, an F-16 or a Tecums or a drone, uh, like a Gray Eagle, whatever mm -hmm. the system is, most important is the capability to hit long range with precision. And as uh, General Cavoli, the Sakur, has said, precision can defeat mass as long as you have enough time. And there are some vulnerabilities underneath the Russian reliance on mass infantry and mass artillery. If you can destroy the headquarters and if you can destroy the transportation network, then you can undermine or degrade the effectiveness of the mass infantry and the mass artillery. So if that's true, and, and I certainly believe it is, then the capabilities that are needed are for precision long-range weapons, regardless of the platform. F-16s, of course, I, I'm 100% in favor of F-16s being delivered, but that's not the debate. That, that should not be the debate. The debate should be focused on what is the capability? And, and then there are different systems that can provide that capability. But when you get wrapped up into a debate about F-16s, then it turns into, well, how long will it take? 
how much training, the maintenance, just like this waste of time we had on M1 tanks. Instead, talk about capability that will enable Ukraine to achieve a, a decisive victory over the Russians this year that would result in the liberation of Crimea. That's what matters. Donbass will follow. When you, when you liberate Crimea, which I think is possible by the end of this summer, if, if you get the long-range capability I'm talking about, then everything else will follow after that. Crimea is the key. So I, I don't know who said that Russia would crack after 10,000 casualties. That, that makes no sense. And I would never use numbers of casualties as, as the decisive metric for whether or not they would continue. We know from history that war is a test of will as well as a test of logistics. And so uh, it's clear that Ukrainian soldiers and Ukrainian people have superior will to Russian soldiers and Russian people, but it's also clear that Russia has more bodies than does Ukraine. So they, and that they are willing to continue to waste these lives. And I, I also am not able to figure out why the Russian population continues to act like sheep and allow so many men be sent to the slaughter without there being more and more domestic. But we also know that war is a test of logistics. And so going after Russia's logistics is how the thing, I think, breaks the back of Russian forces. To continue to attack transportation, to continue to attack ammunition storage, to continue to attack headquarters, which makes it impossible for Russia to use its one advantage, mass numbers. This is how I think we do this. And of course, the West has to continue with the sanctions because that affects Russia's logistics. Yeah, I, I do believe that Ukraine can liberate Crimea by the end of this summer, so the end of August, if, and that's a big if, the West provides the capabilities that that are needed to make Crimea untenable for Russian forces. Terrace, you do know. I mean, the size of, of the peninsula, Ukraine knows where everything is, the air bases, the naval bases, the logistics sites. I mean, there's no place to hide. So what Ukraine needs is the ability to hit those targets that are well known and make it impossible for Russian Federation forces to stay there. Make sure that they can never repair Kerch Bridge, continue to hit the land bridge that runs from Rostov through Mariupol and Melitopol down into Crimea, uh, and then hit Sevastopol, Saki, Zhankoi, and other sites with long-range precision weapons so that they cannot stay there. If we don't have those longer-range precision weapons in the next few months, then it will be very difficult for Ukraine to liberate Crimea uh, by the end of this summer. Now, the meeting that you're talking about was reportedly a classified briefing by members of the Pentagon, leaders, uh, senior people from the Pentagon, to members of the House Armed Services Committee. But it was a closed classified briefing, so anything that was leaked out of there would be inappropriate. And I would also be skeptical of information that comes out of there, because people who leak information do so because they have their own agenda. They're trying to influence something. So that's why I am I'm not confident in what I read about what came out of that meeting. There is no doubt, however, that there are people in the Pentagon and in the White House that are skeptical. I mean, General Milley has said it publicly that Ukraine could eject Russia from Ukraine this year. He said it would be extremely difficult. And yes, it will be extremely difficult and even more difficult if the Pentagon or if the, the administration does not provide those capabilities that we've talked about. Well, again, this is part of the uh, the requirement is the long-range precision weapons, the capability to hit specific things such as the facilities at Sevastopol or the logistics base at Zhankoi or the air base at Saki and, and the other places to make it where the Russians cannot use them anymore. Uh, so precision weapons, of course, reduces civilian casualties, unlike what the Russians are doing in their attacks on Ukrainian cities and, and the infrastructure. Now, I think that once once people see that uh, Ukraine is able to hit military targets in Crimea, I think you'll see people heading uh, for the exit, wanting to leave, because Crimea will become a trap for Russians uh, that are there. I think, I feel confident that the Congress, in a bipartisan way, all this year will continue to support Ukraine. There's really uh, only a, a small number of voices, and they're not senior people in the Congress on the Republican side that talk about stopping this.